Natalie, we're ready for you. Oh yeah, one second. I just went through a breakup recently, two years ago. Um, we were engaged and we broke up. It's fine, I'm a strong, independent woman. He moved out of my mother's basement. <laughs> he stole a bunch of things from me when he moved out. He stole important things like my credit card info and my trust. But he also stole weird random things, okay? Like he stole my Brita filter, <sighs> my air fryer. <sighs> my pubic hair tremor. <laughs> He's like, you can move on, but you're gonna do it with a full bush. <laughs> Is anyone here married or engaged? Wow. I feel like you can tell a lot about a relationship by the proposal, right? Like I should have known it wasn't gonna work out with my ex by the way he proposed. Right? He didn't do something sweet. Our, our families weren't there, although, he did propose to me in the middle of crazy sex, okay? <laughs> we were in my mom's basement. <laughs> I was tied to a massage table. <laughs> and the safe word was yes. <laughs> I do live in my mom's basement, thank you. Uh, yeah. It is hard to date when you live in your mom's basement. Like if I go on a date with a guy and it's going well, I'll be like, hey, you wanna come over? My mom goes to bed at eight. <laughs> I was hanging out with this guy recently. We're getting to know each other. And he's like, where do you see yourself for the next few years? I'm like, dude, I don't know. Maybe I'll be upstairs. <laughs> Finally, he slept over and my mom made us breakfast in the morning. Yeah. She looked at him, she's like, so what'd you guys do last night? I'm like, mom, you're embarrassing him. He drank too much and he couldn't get hard. I, I was like a really sexual kid. Anyone here like have a young sexual awakening? Right now I feel creepy. Now I really feel creepy. But when I was in kindergarten, uh, my, my teacher called my parents and uh, this is totally real. My teacher called my parents and was like, um, Natalie is hovering over the corners of tables in class. <laughs> My parents were very upset about this, all right? <laughs> yeah, they hung up the phone. They're like, how dare you tell our daughter not to masturbate in class? <laughs> I seriously will never forget that teacher, okay? <laughs> she didn't want me to masturbate in class and now I think about her every time I do. <laughs> how long have you guys been dating? Second date. What happened to your hand? Uh, <laughs> you felt. You're an adult skateboarder. <laughs> what did he say to you to make him go to make you go out with an adult skateboarder, as an attractive woman in New York City? Oh, you know what was his line? No. <laughs> You know what it is, it's, this is what we do. We go for ugly guys, that's what we do. We watch, we watch too many romantic comedies, we thought they were safe. Listen, you're not ugly, it's just that we, we date a little bit down, okay? That's what we do. He's an adult skateboarder, okay? We just like,
like, we just want to be a little bit hotter than you. That's all, okay? We just want to be safe. Oh, wow, a lot of women can't laugh at this right now because you're with your ugly men, I see. I get it, I'm not being shallow, okay? If you lined up my exes, it would look like a troll museum in Bushwick. My ex, he was the drummer of a band that just didn't exist. He slept in a bunk bed that he made himself. And he had a grandson, so... I'm not saying to go find your Prince Charming, but don't seek out your Shrek, right? There's nothing wrong with Shrek. Like, I'd sit down, I'll watch the Shrek movies all day. I just wouldn't sit down on Shrek's face all day. Unless he was rich. No, I do, I do like older guys. Anyone here like older guys? Yeah, okay. Wow, I love it. Yes, Grace. I... <laughs> I love older guys, but here's the thing. People always accuse me of having daddy issues, and I'm like, dude, I don't have daddy issues. I love my dad. I just love your dad more. <laughs> Dating sucks, though. It really, it really is hard, especially in this city. I grew up in New York City. Is anyone here from New York? Yeah, where'd you go to high school? Okay, yeah, real New Yorker right here. I grew up in Queens. Just means I tried Coke before I got my first period. <laughs> Like, I was exposed to drugs before I was exposed to cool places to do drugs. <laughs> First time I tried ecstasy, I wasn't at a rave. I was at a Subway sandwich restaurant off Junction Boulevard. <laughs> I tripped so hard to the smell of Italian urban cheese. <laughs> they say you're not supposed to have sex on ecstasy because it'll never feel that good again. Same thing applies to eating a sandwich. <laughs> That's why I was so skinny in high school. I love this guy in high school. His name was Luke. I don't know if he's here right now. <laughs> he didn't like me back, obviously. I became a comedian, but we did have sex one time. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. But the one time we had sex, you guys will never guess what happened, okay? The condom broke. <laughs> I know, I thought it was awesome. But he, he didn't think so, he really didn't. Uh, he was pacing around the room, he's like, I don't know what to do. And then he did the nicest thing a guy has ever done for me. He was like, you know what, Natalie? I will pay for the plan B. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> So he gave me a dollar a day for the rest of 11th grade. <laughs> and I took the plan B 50 days later. <sighs> I, uh, I have a lot of tattoos. Anyone here have tattoos? <laughs> Fuck yeah. So I feel like people ask me what my tattoos mean. I'm like, the answer is simple. It's just the number of tattoos I have is the number of times my family told me I'd be more beautiful without them. That's all. <laughs> Tattoos, they're not supposed to mean anything, okay? And they're not supposed to be for a guy, okay? Take it from me, I've had three exes' names tattooed to my body, all right? Here's the thing, if I'm dating you and I don't have a tattoo of your name, I don't really like you. <laughs> At this point, I have a guy, right? Like, I have a guy I go to when I go through breakups to cover up exes' names. Like, this is where I am in my life. I have to go to him, I have to be like, Nash, I did it again. Like, let's put something cute over it this time. Maybe like a butterfly or a coffin. <laughs> now I have like seven coffin tattoos. Like my mom, she hates my tattoos, but she really wants me to have a kid. That makes no sense. Kids are just like tattoos. <laughs> They're permanent, expensive, painful. You get one, you show everyone a picture, they pretend to care. <laughs> and 18 years later, it looks like shit, but you have a story to tell. <laughs> Anyone here have kids? Make some noise if you have kids. Wow, okay, how old's your kid? Six. Six, wow, okay. That's cool, is it a, is it a boy or a girl? 
a girl. Great. Do you have custody? No, I'm sorry. <sighs> That's cool. I, I really, I do want to have a kid, I do. It's just, I don't know how I'm going to carry a child in my body for nine months. Like, I can't even sit through dinner with a butt plug in. <laughs> I'm like, you can't take out a kid in the middle of sushi dinner and hope it blends in with a soy sauce tray, so. I think it's crazy that women carry the child. Like, it fucks up our bodies, it fucks up our hormones and then it gets the man's last name. <laughs> That's fucking psychotic, okay? I will tell you one thing, you're not naming my butt plug. <laughs> Are you guys dog people or cat people? Dog. <laughs> what was that? I don't know what animal that was. Your dog makes that noise? Can't you do it again? <laughs> Are you gonna be the one to murder me tonight? <laughs> wow. Um, I feel like that's a song, you're, the sound your dog makes when it's like eating a body. Um, but I like that, my, my dog doesn't make that sound, but my dog, he's a rescue dog, um, so I'm just like Joe Biden. Uh, we both fell off a bicycle this year, and uh, I don't know if you know this, he's one of the only presidents that has a rescue dog. It's because he couldn't remember where to buy a dog, but... <laughs> My dog, he's really anxious. He actually has a Xanax prescription, which means that I have a Xanax prescription. <laughs> it's amazing, like I don't have to steal from my family on the holidays anymore. <laughs> but now all the Xanax I take is sandwiched between American cheese. <laughs> I'm also not afraid of the vacuum anymore, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Let me tell you what it's like to have a dog that takes Xanax, okay? Like, I try to take him for a walk. He just looks at me. He's like, nah, nah, bro. <laughs> Can't we just smoke a blunt? <laughs> Watch him chopped? <laughs> Order takeout? <laughs> he used to be such a good guard dog. Like, if a delivery guy came, he'd bark. Now, a delivery guy comes, he's like, you get it. <laughs> I do think, um, I do think my dog learned how to chew a bone from watching me suck dick. <laughs> I don't know where else he would have learned to use that much teeth. <laughs> I walked someone. Okay, I'm sorry. His penis is chiseled. He's like, I have to go. <laughs> He's like, I got a circumcision at the wrong time in the wrong place. <laughs> now my dog, he just, he gets in there, he gets all the marrow out, and if someone tries to take his bone away, he loses his shit, so we're very similar. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a masochist. Anyone like a little bit of a freak? Yes, great. Uh, yeah, okay, all right. <laughs> I don't know, it's hard when you're a masochist, right? Because if something hurts, I don't know if I should go to the doctor or just enjoy it. <laughs> but my doggy was a pandemic dog and uh, I was worried that he'd care that I'd used his leash before he got there, but it was totally, <laughs> it was all good. It was fine, we're buddies. <laughs> we are buddies. Um... <laughs> I'm a pretty anxious person. Does anyone here get anxious? Yeah. My God, thank God. You guys, you should, I hope you could have some of my anxiety right now. Please take it, <laughs> take it. I hate it. I feel like people that don't have anxiety, they just don't understand it, you know what I mean? Like, my friend recently, she's like, oh, Natalie, I saw a meme about anxiety. I think I understand you now. <laughs> I was like, what? Okay, what did the meme say? 
She's like, it said anxiety is like trying to parallel park with a bunch of people watching. I was like, no. That's living in Manhattan. Anxiety is when you feel like the worst possible scenario is about to happen all the time, right? You're always thinking like, what's the worst possible thing that could happen to me and that's about to happen to me right now? So you sit in your room in the dark and you cry and you eat cheese and you wipe your tears with the wrappers and you realize you're lactose intolerant and there's no Xanax in the cheese. That's anxiety. <laughs> I have really bad OCD and... Um, <laughs> Nice. You wanna fuck? Four times. Um, I have really bad OCD and uh, sometimes I can't sleep at night, so uh, I'll count sheep. And then I'll get worried that one of the sheep forgot to turn the stove off. <laughs> Sucks so much. Like, I just got security cameras put into my house, so now I can check the locks three times. And then I can watch security footage of me checking the locks three times. <laughs> then I can masturbate three times, me watching the security footage three times, and me checking the locks three times. And I feel like there are certain jobs I couldn't have because of my OCD. Like, I could never be a surgeon, and it's not just because I'm stupid. <sighs> like, I feel like uh, I, would, uh, I would be doing surgery on someone, right? And I'd finish up, and then I'd turn to the nurse, and I'd be like, oh my god, do you think we forgot something in there? I think we need to open them back up and check. <laughs> like, is that where I put my butt plug? <laughs> I'm always late to everything. Like, I'm one of those people, I am fucking late to everything. And I, one of the reasons is because I always have to go back to my house and make sure that the stove is off and the doors are locked. Does anyone else do this? Yeah, okay, one person is honest. Um, so I started doing this new thing where like I take photos of uh, the stove being off and the doors being locked. But now my entire camera roll is just stoves doors, and the occasional dick pic. <laughs> Sometimes I look at the dick pic and I'm like, what the fuck, why is my hand in this? <laughs> it never happens with the door pictures though. I feel like when I was a kid, first of all, when I was a kid, and I'm, if I met myself now, I would be horrified. I really would. I would be horrified. I would be afraid of who I am right now because I was afraid of everything. Like, I thought everyone was scary. I didn't even go to school on Halloween until I was in high school. <laughs> yep, I was too scared. My mom would drive me to school. We'd sit in the car and she'd be like, do you think you can go in? And I'd be like, no. <laughs> I hated it. I hated the pranks. I hated the fake blood. I hated the guys wearing costumes. It wasn't until I was much older that I realized guys are much scarier when they're just being themselves. <laughs> I wish I could have been like, hey, Natalie, you think Nikki's scary wearing the Scream costume? Wait till he's wearing nothing but an expired condom. <laughs> <sighs> I, uh, I'm a terrible driver. Um, <laughs> is anybody else a woman? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a really bad driver. Is anyone a bad driver in here? Yeah, right? It's so fun being a bad driver, it really is. It's fun just driving around like you're playing Mario Kart in real life. Driving into walls, just fucking having fun, coming in 12th, right? I like it, but you know, the worst part about being a bad driver is when you have to drive other people around, right? Especially men, especially one that you're dating, right? They like to sit in the passenger seat, they like to drive from the passenger seat, and they think that like, you don't know what a stop sign is. Right? They think that like, you don't know how to read a GPS. <laughs> you're like, I can read a GPS, I just don't want to. 
when my ex and I started dating, I was like, I can't give you a ride anywhere. I'm too bad of a driver. You're going to sit in the passenger seat. You're going to judge my driving. The only way I will ever give you a ride is if I blindfold you and give you ketamine. <laughs> And he's like, that's so funny. That's actually what I was going to do to you. <laughs> so we got engaged. <laughs> I'm a pretty jealous person in relationships. Anyone here get jealous? This whole front row of men. You look... You all look pretty possessive. You guys, are you guys possessive? No. You guys are so chill. How long have you been together again? Two years, but you're long distance. No, she was in LA. She moved here. She moved here. Okay. How'd you meet? Facebook. Facebook? Wow, that's a bold move. And your foot's on the stage, um, which I like. Keep it there. I'm kidding. Take it off. Now lick the stage fucking clean. Um, yeah, I feel like I get pretty jealous in relationships. Like, if I'm dating a guy and he gives any other woman attention, I lose my fucking mind, you know? Like, my ex was telling me the story. He was like, oh, Christina picked me up from the airport yesterday. Isn't that so nice? I was like, nice? <laughs> you think that's fucking nice? <laughs> I will build you a fucking plane. You think that's fucking nice? <laughs> we were at the mall. We were like going shopping for shoes. And he was like, oh, babe, that girl's shoes are so cute. They look so good on you. I was like, oh, you think her shoes are cute? That's cool. <laughs> that's so cool that you think her shoes are cute. <laughs> that guy's sweatpants would make your dick look bigger. <laughs> Before I did comedy, I, uh, I worked at a coffee shop, and uh, whenever a customer was an asshole, I would just give them decaf. <laughs> it's very similar to what I do now. If I'm hooking up with a guy, he insists on not wearing a condom, I just give him chlamydia. <laughs> the truth really burns when you pee, as you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys are great. But you know, you've been through a lot. No, I... Yeah. I think the worst part about like being engaged to someone and uh, breaking up is, uh, is really the wasted blowjobs, really. I think that's the worst part. It's like, I thought I was gonna be with this fucking guy for life. I gave him so much head just to get it out of the way, you know? I just like... <laughs> Count to 300, it's done. I'm like tallying up for life. And then we fucking break up. It's so upsetting. Like not only did I fucking waste the blowjobs, but I wasted the calories. Like it's... There should be rollover blowjobs in relationships. Like there are rollover minutes with T-Mobile. <laughs> I want to go up to my next boyfriend and be like, hey, babe, I love you so much, but you have no idea how much head I gave my ex. <laughs> Doesn't that count? <laughs> I gave him so much roadhead. <laughs> like roadhead, it's like reading a book in the car. <laughs> Makes me dizzy and it's really fucking boring. <laughs> I feel like over the pandemic, a lot of my friends were getting back with their exes. Pathetic move there. <laughs> it's really a disappointment for me. I had to hear about them all over again, you know? I feel like getting back with an ex is like <sighs> eating at a restaurant that gave you food poisoning. <laughs> right? It's like you eat there, you spend the entire night throwing up and crying. <laughs> And then you're gonna go eat that shit again? <laughs> it's like, even if you go back a few weeks later and they're like, hey babe, I've changed my menu. <laughs> like, they're still touching raw meat with no glove, so. <sighs> Fuck.
I gained a lot of weight over the pandemic. I lost it, I lost it, but I lost it in a really unhealthy way, okay? I, I gained and lost like 20 pounds by drinking laxative tea. <laughs> Don't knock until you try it. Um, but I was really depressed, you know? So I put whiskey in the tea. <laughs> And then I would just black out and wake up shitting. <laughs> it's really fun to make your friends take laxative tea. <laughs> like, I have this new weight loss tea. They text you the next day, they're like, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> I can't go to work today. I really, I didn't mind wearing a mask at all. It's just like, I still would wear lipstick even if I had to wear a mask. And then I'd take off my mask and the inside of my mask would look like the inside of my underwear when I'm on my period. <laughs> so I had to start selling my mask as merch after shows. <laughs> it's pretty lucrative. I am, um, I'm half, this is a non sequitur. I'm half Italian, half Jewish. Thanks. Yeah, so I do. I leave a nice tip and then I ask for it back. <laughs> if I'm feeling nice, like I'll leave a $100 bill, but then I'll have to ask for 99 and change. <laughs> My mom hates that joke. <laughs> She's the Jewish one. <laughs> She's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Jewish people are not cheap, okay? <laughs> and Italians don't tip while your dad was stingy as fuck. <sighs> My mom only likes the sex jokes. <laughs> do you three know each other? How do you guys know each other? Sisters, friends. Ooh, okay. I always felt like if I had a sister, I wouldn't be as weird as I would because they'd be like, you're a fucking freak, you need to stop. <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like there's this one thing that I did when I was a kid that I feel like my parents should have put an end to, okay? And that's I would obsessively pick my belly button. <laughs> they should have put an end to it. I mean, my belly button, it was, it was scabbed, it was disgusting, it was bruised, it was purple. Okay, all they did is they put me in a onesie. That didn't work, okay? I put my arm up the leg. I was like, ha ha, you can't stop me. It was so fucked up. I remember one time I was like, I can't handle having this secret. It's like, I need to confide in my best friend. So in fourth grade, I told my best friend, Joanna. I was like, Joanna, I have to tell you something. I picked my belly button. <laughs> And she was like, Natalie, I always wondered what you were doing down there. <laughs> I always wondered if it was like the feeling on my belly button I liked or the feeling on my finger. I realized it was both. <laughs> then I had these problems later in life because like I had this roommate and she had a phobia of belly buttons. So I had to move out. I tried to find another roommate, but she had an Audi. Um, I'll never be okay. <laughs> Do you guys live in New York? Do you live in New York? Are you visiting? You're visiting? Okay, cool. You guys look like fun. I wish I had friends, but... It's okay, I'll do this instead, I guess. <laughs> Is anyone here, um, anyone here drunk? I'm really intrigued by you, this whole row. <laughs> Are you guys friends? You two, oh, really, you two? I live in his basement. You what? I live in his basement. You, you live in his basement? Yeah, we're one in the same. We're one in the same? Is that like he's your mom? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are cute together. That's cute. He's your buddy. <laughs> he impregnated your friend. <laughs> so you both raising the six-year-old together? 
Just the two of you raising a fucking six-year-old. <laughs> you and your tie-dye weed socks. <laughs> Who's watching the kid tonight? <laughs> Babysitter. You guys are an adorable pair, I'll tell you that much. Fuck, that's good, I'm gonna move on. He's a good mother. Um, damn. <sighs> yeah, I don't really drink that much anymore uh, because stuff like that, I don't wanna get, you know, impregnated and then, it was in college? What? No. That, what happened in college? <laughs> I feel like college is like the biggest waste of money ever, to be honest. Like you got a kid out of it. You're in even more debt. I feel like the only reason I'm glad I went to college is now there's no grammatical errors on my OnlyFans. <laughs> Like, I have a bachelor's in environmental science. I can't get a fucking job with that, okay? You can't get a job with a bachelor's in environmental science. Like, not only that, I'm not qualified to do anything. Like, I'm not even qualified to milk a cow in someone's backyard, <laughs> unless I'm naked. <sighs> but yeah, I really, I don't drink that much. The last time I got really drunk, I blacked out. Like, I blacked out so fucking hard, and I went home with this guy, I woke up, he was in my bed, and uh, I had no idea if we'd had sex the night before until I farted and cum came out. <laughs> That's my mom's favorite joke. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm Natalie Cuomo. Thank you so much.